Hello, mamas and friends. It's Sarah here from Late Night Coffee Moms again. I'm really glad you're here to hang out with me tonight. It has been a day. Nothing too crazy or weird, but it was one of those days where if I was going to a small group, I would cancel. <laughs> so I'm glad to be sitting here with you guys with my coffee at my house with my turtle and being able to talk to you guys. So here's what happened. Oh my goodness. Oh, yeah, you can tell it's been a day. You can see my crazy mom flyaways and I don't know what that is. Anyway, so Wednesday, I remember I was talking to you guys about this. One of my children was sick with a fever and it was a pretty bad fever, but the next day they were okay. Um, but then it spiked again last night, which it doesn't matter how old your kid is. I'm sure my mom might even say that, even though I'm much older than, no, anyway. Um, you worry about them, especially when it's that bad. And my husband and I were taking turns, checking on it, um, checking on them and all that kind of stuff. So this morning we couldn't get the fever down, so we had to go to the doctor. The doctor is like our last resort kind of thing. But when it was a fever as high as it was, we didn't want to mess around. So we went and we even had our daughter looked at because of course this morning, um, my other child woke up with a sore throat and a headache. Now we've already been down this road. We got this already before Christmas. And so we got all that taken care of, but all of that just adds up and adds up to this. <laughs> and I'm tired. My brain is frustrated. I really am looking for something to calm me and focus me, but that's not going to happen. It's just um, going to be one of those things. So I thought, what better timing to talk about how to homeschool when you have sick kids in your house than today? Because that's what's happening in my world. Now, I'm not talking about chronic illnesses or that kind of thing. I, uh, by the grace of God, have not had to walk through chronic illness and homeschooling. I know plenty of homeschool mamas that have and have rocked it, and they're amazing, and they're my inspirations, but that's not me. We're talking about colds to the biggest things we've dealt with in my house are things like mono and pneumonia, which are pretty big, but... They're not chronic. They're not going to the hospital uh, for treatments every day kind of stuff. So I thought I would fill you in about how we still make homeschooling work on sick days. Now, honestly, if mama wakes up sick, we take the day off. Or I have my children watching documentaries or historical fictions, things like that, to kind of inspire them to keep their brain going. Sometimes I'll have my... Um, youngest oh my oh my goodness my youngest play with a uh, play-doh or clay to help her find motor skills and that kind of stuff my my oldest is old enough to do a lot of their work on their own but when they're little when they're younger and they're waiting on you to know what's happening to know what's coming next and you're not feeling well it's really hard to keep the momentum of schooling going and not this big free-for-all in your house. So we did that a lot um, during a bout of sickness with me using um, a television show called American Ride, which this guy gets on his Harley, I think, and drives through America and gives you little historical stories. We did that by watching a show called Travel with Kids, which is just like it sounds. Mom and a dad take their two sons and they travel to places and you get to learn history about the area and visit it with them and what kind we did that so you know we traveled to Hawaii with them I remember and we watched them harvest I, I guess harvest and make poi and then we had spam and eggs for, for lunch that was that was the unit study of the day because mama didn't feel good but when my children are really sick when we ha we had a situation where both of my children had pneumonia and one of them had mono on top of it. We literally drug a mattress out into the living room. That's where mom and the kids camped. 
dad would camp there sometimes too, but when he really needed to sleep, he'd go sleep in his, his room because dad has to go to work. Um, some homeschool moms have to still go to work, but at this time I didn't have to. So we slept out there because every four hours they needed a nebulizer, they needed more medication, and it was just easier to just be all contained in one spot, steps away from the water, steps away from the Ritz crackers and the bone broth and the antibiotics and whatever else we had going on. I don't, God's blocked some of that for me because it was pretty stressful. But during that time, we took time to take care of each other, to talk about nutrition, <laughs> of course. This is why you're sick. You had too many candies. No, um, to talk about a little bit of nutrition and how your body works and all that kind of stuff. But we listened to audiobooks, lots of them. We went on LibriVox.org. I know I've talked to you guys about that before. And we looked up classics. Um, my brain can't even remember. I know we listened to Heidi. That's 13 hours long. Heidi. Um, we listened to... We listened to all the Winnie the Poohs. That wasn't on LibriVox. That was an, on audiobooks, and we already had those. We listened to all the Winnie the Poohs and discussed the difference between Winnie the Pooh the book and Winnie the Pooh the movies, which ones we thought were better, which ones we thought um, detailed kid life the best. You know, Winnie, one of the things that happens in the book that doesn't happen in the movies is Winnie the Pooh only knows one way for going up and down stairs, and that's being drug by his feet and his head hitting, hitting each step. Well, you don't see that in the movie and it makes so much sense because that's how Christopher Robin carried him, dragging him with his feet. So we talked about those kind of things. And being back at that period that was extremely stressful for me and my husband and my kids, we couldn't even leave the house. We couldn't have visitors over. That's how we, our kids were. Um, my sister was even dropping off little presents for them. That's how sick they were um we still remember that all four of us as a good time together as a close time together and tons of learning took place just learning how to have a conversation with each other learning how to listen let's see what else did we listen to we we went to this one um person we found on librivox.org and her name is Kay ray that's the narrator's name and i'll link that to in the comments uh the post later, K. Ray reads to you, and we listen to silly books like um, the Bagthorps, silly, crazy humor books, and the family is not really even nice to each other. And we could discuss that and family dynamics and how maybe if they had talked a little bit nicer to one another, they would have gotten their way a little bit easier. Or maybe getting their way wasn't even the point, but surrendering to be a family was the point. And they had to learn that the hard way because they were bitter at or whatever. We listen to the Melody uh, Quartet, which is the Saturdays and books like those. Those are wonderful books. And we got to follow all the children all along these paths. So instead of just plugging in the TV, which sometimes kind of has to happen, it's a tool and we can use it to glorify God and we can use it to build up our children and we can use it to homeschool or we can just use it to create uh, time killing dead space, whatever. But if you use it as a tool, that's awesome. So instead of, but instead of plugging into the television and instead of trying to get all these curriculums out and trying to battle through math and trying to battle through reading because today you could breathe easier than you could breathe yesterday, that didn't make any sense. No one was going to absorb a single thing if we took that approach. No one was, it was just going to be bitterness and tears, probably mostly on my part, and frustration, again, probably mostly on my part, and we would have missed out on all these great adventures we went on together because we were too sick to get up and hit a real textbook. It was amazing. It was probably one of the best times in our homeschooling journey because we read so much. It's interesting, and in my family, we have some unique situations. Uh, one of my children taught themselves to read at four, and the other one did not. And we have lots of different little quirks and little uh, 
learning difficulties or differences or disabilities, whatever you want to call them in our house. But when you're listening to an audiobook together and you're stopping and asking each other things like, well, what do you think is going to happen next? Well, why do you think they made that choice? What choice do you think they should have made better? Or just flat laughing together and enjoying being with these characters. You're on a level playing field. Everybody gets to have their feelings heard. Everybody gets to be the smart one. Occasionally, this, kind, this kid's going to get the inside joke faster than this kid, and vice versa. Sometimes it's the littlest one who pulls the biggest nuggets out of what we were reading, like Winnie the Pooh. I didn't piece together just reading it, oh, he's being drug up the stairs by his feet. I was like, what? That's a weird way to start a story. And it was my littlest one going, well, mom, that's because that's how he's carrying him, by his feet up the stairs. So it was a great experience. Now, if we just are too sick, we just don't do it. <coughs> and we make it up later. A lot of the things that I've told many of my homeschooling friends, and I tell myself repeatedly, is that I have been called to do this, not because I am highly educated or super smart. I've been called to do this because, who knows, Could because God wants to be glorified in me trying to do this. So that's why I'm homeschooling. <laughs> and because he's called me, and because he's, I'm following him, He's not going to leave my kids without things they need. So if I create a gap in their education, if a sickness creates a gap in the, their education, he's going to fill that in. He might not fill that in on a standard test sort of timeline, but he's going to fill it in for life. He's not going to leave them hanging. He's not a God who's, who does that. He doesn't sit there and punish you because somebody else didn't do their job. So what I tell a lot of my friends is do what God has called you to do and trust that today when you woke up, if you were sick and you've talked to the Lord and he's kind of urging you to sit and be still today, then just do that. The biggest lesson for your kids is going to come from that because you're obeying and he's going to fill in the rest. So how do you guys homeschool through sickness? Have you ever had to? Are you one of my heroes out there who homeschooled through chronic illness? I don't know how some of these ladies do it, but they do it, and they do it beautifully. It's amazing. If you guys ever want me to question one of them or bring them on alive to talk to you about how to do that, I can ask around and see if anybody is willing to meet up with us. But until then, it was great seeing you. Thanks for hanging out with me and my harried mom hair day <laughs> whoa it's time for me to relax and enjoy my hot cup of coffee and i'm really glad i got to hang out with you guys today so i guess the next time is monday for another verse of the week i'll see you then catch you later bye